guys. The microphone needs to be in my grill face so you guys get the best stones out of Niblet K. Hello, welcome to the stream. As of usual, it has been a very, very nice experience up until this far, and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. So we're going to keep on doing this for as long as I can. And as long as there is video game content out there, I'll definitely watch it with you guys. That is definitely something I wanted to do for a long ass time. So without any other further ado, hi, welcome to uh, Game Trailers. Oh, we've got a bunch of stuff as you guys already see here. We got a bunch of stuff. I'm going to start with something dear to my heart, which is Naruto. However, I never played Shinobi Strikers. But let's take a look at the new the new trailer. Also, I haven't seen the Boruto saga. Season Pass 4 Regeneration. Kawaki. Ooh. Did he just negate everything? Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Season Pass 4 Regeneration. Sakura Haruno Great Ninja War. Nagato Reanimation. Itachi Uchiha Reanimation. Sasuke Uchiha Last Battle. And Kawaki. Nice. That definitely looks so sweet. So, Shinobi Strikers. Like I said, I've never played it. But apparently there's a lot to do in it. And you can make your custom characters and whatnot. So that's a thing. Go check it out. If you're a Naruto fan, you should probably, probably play all the games. I'm just saying, they're they're pretty good. I like the Storm series. That's the one I'm a fan of. Next, we got a Horizon Forbidden West official challenges of the Forbidden West Rated trailers. Now, this is interesting. I haven't played the first one, but I so want to. I just got it for the PS4. However, I don't get the time. Which sucks, West. but it's still a it's still a good game. You better be prepared. In every settlement, this looks so good. To know the local customs. Grab new gear to be <laughs> ready for any situation. Ooh, nice. And of course, make sure you're properly armed. Maybe even get in some upgrades while you're at it. Drill with your spear in a melee pit. Then, when you're Ooh. ready for the wilds, tough it out at a hunting grounds. Or track down rare machine parts. That looks so a good. Salvage contract. But be careful. The West is overrun by Regala and her rebels. Between their outposts and their camps, they're a whole heap of trouble. <laughs> and remember, there's a lot of strange things in the wilds. Yes. Ruins, cauldrons, and more. The fact that they implemented the water I section is so land. cool. An arena where the best warriors prove their metal against deadly machines. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. So, wherever your trail leads, watch yourself out there and good luck. That's a car. Rise above our ruin. Available February 18th. Nice. Nice. This is definitely a must play. A must play. Oh well. 
Next on the list, we got a nine minute, pretty long one, a Sifu official live action short film. And then get ready guys for some Kung Fu action. <laughs> Disregard what is not. For eight years I've practiced this mentality. For eight years I've trained here alone. My family was taken from me at a young age. I've tracked down the five people responsible. I'll start with you. You are now necessary. Game. Shit. Who the hell are you? What? Hey, buddy. Are you fucking blind? Where do you think you're going? Here to see for sure. Leave. He back there? What? what don't you understand? Maybe he needs help. I'll take it out the trash. Wrong place today, try and come in and start a fight. Here we go. Oh, that is so well made. So well made. What the? Remember me? This is tense. It, does that mean kill him? What? Dang. Ow, ow. Hatush, hatush, hatush. Yeah. Oh. Yush. <laughs> oh, that was a nice kick. I love the, the guy's face where he, he did his arm. Did he just change? No, no, this is another guy. I thought the old man changed his shoes.
Well, this guy's not messing around. He's kind of good. What is stronger, chat? A sword or a pipe? They did it. The only true mistake is one from which nothing is learned. Yep, he's older. With each fatal error, I am gifted life, but at the cost of time. I will succeed before my time is up. <laughs> this is so cool. This game is going to be cool. I don't think it's going to be as long, but it's definitely going to going to be worthwhile. Based on the video game Sifu by Slow Clap. Very great, good, great job, guys. I loved it. All of you guys deserve a big clap. Also, pre-order bonuses. You get the digital soundtrack and the digital art book. 48-hour early access and 10% discount. Not bad. Sifu, definitely put that one on your radar, guys. Now, what the hell is it? Cardboard Kings. We got the Aka Akupara Games. Let's see, what is this thing? Cardboard Kings, open the world's best game shop. Hidden in a shoebox tucked away in my parents' attic, I finally found my old cards. <laughs> All the lawns I mowed just for a single booster. But there it was, my favorite card, the super rare Pupping Corn. A misprint, there were only three in the whole world. And ten-year-old me found the fourth. Holy smokes, it's worth a fortune now! Open your own card shop. Buy low, sell high. Dog. <laughs> oh, the mystery. I will protect the legendary cards no matter what. Collect over 100 cards. Okay, that's doable. Coming February 10th on GOG Steam. Dude.
This is so cool. It's a meme game. About collecting card game. Uh, yeah. Collectible card games. That is worth it. That is definitely something to try out. Definitely something to try out. Oh my god. The Kingdom of Astoria. Save the... Wait. Is this a clash? Oh my god. It's a mobile game, right? Right, chat? Shiv Shiv Valkyrie? Are they supposed to be some sort of Valkyries? Faster than the shark. Just faster than what? Astoria. Ooh, boss battles. The music's cool. I guess those are the specials. And playing with friends is gonna be mayhem. And the question remains, for me specifically, is this a mobile game? They had the controller symbol. Coming soon. They don't say to what. So coming soon, guys. Next on the list, we got Sherlock Holmes. Crimes and punishments for the Nintendo Switch. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes. This is my brother, Layton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. I left my work and decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I was blinded by a flash. Mystery was game. The two men here, both shot. We've got the murderer, the weapon, and the statements. I saw no word by that man. The murderer. The murderer. Oh, that's creepy. That, that was creepy. Definitely looks like an interesting game. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? However, could you know that? This has to be an interesting one. However, I don't think it's up my alley, anyways. It's also a Switch game. We invite you to our annual dinner menu entree frozen rat head salad is this a joke watson you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children we have to go of, of course obviously ah. oh. now it's now available chat go uh, go check it out on your switches Next on the list, we got a short one. We got the character um, trailer for Mad Maggie for Apex Legends. The recent character added. Now, will she face justice, or will Maggie turn the tables on her would-be executioner? You know what they say. Miss with the bull and I'll trample you to When there's blood and in what? the water, Maggie will sense it. She's able to track down those she's hurt to finish the job. Salvo says Kyoda, by the way. And don't bother trying to run. Maggie moves faster when carrying a shotgun. 
allowing her to close the distance on any fleeing opponents. Well, that's not fair. Emotions? Those who try to hide behind cover will soon discover nowhere is safe. Maggie's riot drill allows her to burn out her enemies. Killing and drilling. But nothing embodies Again, that's not fair. Wanton destruction like her ultimate. Get the hell out of her way. A powerful wrecking ball that leaves death and speed boosts in its wake. One day Salvo will be free. And the next day, the syndicate will be dead. Be wary, legends. The most feared villain in the Outlands is at your door. You must band together to control this madness. Or she's sure to bring madness. The down around her. Yeah, why don't you guys just shoot her? Brought to you by the Syndicate and Silva Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Coming February 8th. Uh, I'm gonna keep that for now. Let's watch a shorter one. I, I got a ton of short ones and then we got a little bit more to go through. So I, I want to see what we're gonna do. This is Spellforce 3. Choose your own adventure. A new way to play. The real-time strategy and RPG. That doesn't look that bad. So it's an RTS RPG. That actually looks good, chat. Oh, look at that. Use your journey hero in epic PvP matches. I don't care about PvP. I like I like playing for the stories, chat. I like playing for the stories, you know? Available March 8th. On the PlayStations. Nice. Uh, now this, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. I, I'm going to probably butcher it a little bit, so don't be too mad. We got here the sealed amp all Ample? Amp amp What is this? Develop your dungeon and solve the murder. Agriculturize what? What is this? Dry fairy, damn fairy, super poison. This is a weird game, chat. It's so weird that it's actually intriguing. Definitely has an interesting art style. The sealed ample. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh next, another short one. Apparently never winter. Dragonbone Veil launch trailer for the PS4. The Shield of the North has made great progress against the cult, but we must bolster these efforts. Ooh. 
Your help may be the very thing that turns the tables in our favor. Who? Oh. Assemble the forces! We must stop the ninja! This is the, uh, the MMO, right, guys? Yeah. I think so. Although it's funny, because it's, it's said it's for the PS4. Ah, boy. What is Cubite Classics? The humans. What even is this, chat? Cubite Studios Classics. Pico. Wow. That is very classics. Get back to the Stone Age. The humans. Oh my god. So you get all of these. Awesome retro games. <laughs> Save system, filter selection, new interface. Oh, that looks so bad. Oh. That filter, what they did there, that looks so bad. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, whatever. Cool. Next on the list, we got a another short trailer for the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawls. We got Shredder. Uh, poor April. Who else does Nickelodeon have? I mean, I know of Turtles. Oh, there's a there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Oh boy. Next, I have this little trailer of 18 minutes that we're gonna take a look at. I don't know, but I'm going to take a look at it. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a big trailer. Hi, I'm Edwin Tiong. I'm the voice actor for Yosaurus, one of Edge of Eternity's main characters, and I will be your host for this commentated gameplay. First things first. Let's start this walkthrough by changing the party leader. I feel we should have someone with, uh, more class. More presence. More charisma. Hmm. Someone like... There. Exactly who I had in mind. Now we can get this thing started. So, this walkthrough takes place at roughly the middle of the game, in the Elysian Fields, with a party... Oh, the game's chugging a little bit. So I'm curious to see how the game actually works. Australian continent, Elysian field. Time to remind everyone that in addition to the already stellar English voice acting, the game will also feature Japanese Oh, he's plugging himself so much. And will be available as a free update for PC as well. Okay, that's cool. At any time, you will be able to choose between the Japanese and the English version. As one should. Not that I'm biased towards one or the other, of course. Totally impartial. ね。ここでどうするんだ。送信機を探すんだよ。何 <laughs> So how's the battle? 
I suggest we end this pathetic worm's life before its fluids ruin our value. Oh, it's turn-based. As you can see on the screen, the game uses an active time battle system to decide the turn's order. Active time battle? When it comes to your turn, you will choose between several skills, attacks, and items at your disposal to triumph over your enemies. That's kind of cool. On the Nexus grid. Combat result. Level 19. Alright, I admit this foe was barely worth our time. Maybe we should pick a fight with a more imposing foe. Yeah, do that. Like the ones right beside you. No? Okay. What are we fighting? Level up. Let's open up the menu and see our customization options. Ooh, That's a lot of gems. In sight. Let's put our newly found crystal in a slot right there. Now the fire of two spells. JRPG at its finest, chat. Nito. Did he just say Nito? Is he for real or is he following a script? Lightning attack crystals into our weapons, which will allow us to strike this enemy's elemental weakness. For difficult combat such as these, character placement is important, as it can both allow your characters to evade some of the enemy's most dangerous attacks, as well as set up devastating sneak attacks. Ow. And it definitely had to hurt, right? Oh yeah, he he's definitely in this in this fight for a long time. What to do is to leave the other teammates at it while our lovable rascal continues sleeping and <laughs> This fight is taking a while. He, he, he wasn't joking when he said it's going to be a more difficult battle. Is he just doing this to show off? I can get behind this game. Oh, he's using an ultimate. Has very much Final Fantasy feels. So... I'm down for that. Positively radical. And this concludes the fight. It has a little bit of jank. A little, just a little, kiwi little bit of jank over there. It's not like fully polished and whatnot. Probably has an interesting world to explore. And you get a mount. You don't feel like a doofus just like running around with your party. Like in most RPGs. I think a mount is already way cool. And I like the fact that there's a lot of machines, not just monsters. That to me is very cool. I like fantasy and conjunction with sci-fi so this wraps up our little walkthrough i hope you enjoyed it on behalf of the whole midgar studios team and myself thank you for your interest in edge of eternity thank you too so edge of eternity console release february 10th on the PS4 and PS5. <laughs> Dear villagers. Nice. That's... That's not a bad, bad game. Not a bad game. We'll be taking a look. 
at the Gran Turismo 7 State of Play Deep Dive in 4K for the PS5 and PS4. Now I gotta say chat, this was a live event yesterday. Pretty, pretty late. Hello everyone, I'm Kazunori Yamauchi. And it showcases a lot Today, about Gran Turismo. On our latest game, Gran Turismo 7, releasing March 4th, 2022. Over its 25 year history, the Gran Turismo series has demonstrated a serious love and respect for cars. Yes. What's more, Gran Turismo 7 represents the 25th anniversary of the series. Not bad. However, I just want to showcase Grand some Turismo of the things. So here we have the world map. Get the GT7 player experience. World map. Here's the new map screen. The map is a menu that allows access to the various features in Gran Turismo 7. Our inspiration here was to create a paradise, almost a vacation resort that celebrates car culture. A vacation resort that celebrates car culture. When you begin the campaign, you'll use provided in-game credits to purchase a compact car. Holy shit. I mean, I gotta say one thing participating in races, about the Gran Turismo cars, game, and by tuning or and games, upgrading your vehicles for better performance. They look so good. I don't know exactly how well they play, or how it is. This is ultimately the classic GT campaign mode, but GT7 but has more to offer. They look really good. And the fact that they have so many cars. Whoa. Grand Central is a shopping mall where a player can purchase new cars. Here, players can purchase roughly 300 car models from 2001 and later. Wow. Automotive manufacturers from around the world have assembled here. Holy shit, now that looks so good. A bike. Oh, nice history things. And not only are there showrooms for purchasing cars, there's also a museum for each manufacturer where you can learn about the history of individual brands. They went out all the way. This is a museum of Porsche. And it begins with the birth of Dr. Ferdinand Porsche establishing his own design firm. That is a cool concept. Gran Turismo 7 also houses a world of used cars. Huh. Legend cars. Oh, nice. Certain iconic cars have marked their names in the history books. Even after a hundred years, their names nice. will never fade. The legendary car dealership specializes in these types of famous vehicles. Oh boy. And the circuit experience activity can help you learn these tracks. And then you race. There are also drift trials where players compete using their drifting techniques. Oh, I think... I think there people hate ways drift, to play and drift about the trials in GT7. video games. First, there is a two-player split screen that you can play together in your living room with family and friends. Or not. We don't got friends. Ray tracing aims to more accurately depict lighting and reflections. Oh. But the application that is most suited for may actually be in the expression of cars. Oh. This is because the shiny surfaces of cars reflect the world around them. Yes. With ray tracing, the graphics of Gran Turismo make a jump into the next dimension. Man, that looks so good.
time and weather simulation. The and air pressure specific atmosphere is clear. Six simulation. Well, obviously, they're gonna the focus on weather because it's wet. the most interesting thing for a puddles form in locations game. that are prone to them. And being able to watch your driving in a replay, as we have with the fun of driving. <laughs> Car physics. The automotive physics simulation in Gran Turismo has 25 years of history. Our team gathers feedback from many expert advisors, including Lewis Hamilton, top drivers of the FIA GT Championships, and our technical partners at Michelin. This feedback mm. fuels our automotive simulation, which means that track lap times are consistent to their real-life counterparts, and that the really? driving experience accurately reflects fine sensations. The effects of front and rear vehicle height changes on a car, the effect of wind direction at a circuit, and slipstream effects are all recreated through an aerodynamic simulation using CFD. Hmm. To fully express reality, devices that can convey information that goes beyond graphics and sound are very important. This is not just a game. What they're showcasing this is the here. reason for adaptive triggers and haptic vibrations. It's more. Thanks to the adaptive triggers and haptic vibration capabilities of the DualSense wireless controller, we're able to enhance the player's level of immersion. How many of you console. guys, like honestly, are gonna go like, the "Oh my God, I, I wanted that so badly. That is breaking. insane." Or how many of you guys are just gonna, gonna be the like, car goes into "Okay, I want this car speed, and I want to race." Now let's go. Okay, so let's go. Okay, the feedback and, and whatnot is gonna be interesting, but to feel the state of I don't think we're gonna truly get as invested these are the all of the small details in fine that feeling the track underneath so few people are gonna actually notice but you notice it as a whole a experience no matter the, the fact I, I know that for certain so sound then we got Tuning and car customization. Now this is probably going to be a headache. 60 types of performance parts per car. Oh, oh my By god. Combining these, you can change the performance and overall driving experience as you like. That's too much. Like try it then. This is a first generation Volkswagen Beetle. The people's car, designed by Dr. Ferdinand Porsche, is a rear engine car, which is fairly rare nowadays. Let's try tuning this car. I mean, having a hundred and fifty miles per hour on a buggy has to be insane. Holy shit. Over 650 aerodynamic parts, 130 types of wheels, 1200 colors of measured paint data. You can go on forever with the numbers. Obviously. But there are several dozen types of parts per car, totaling to several thousand customization parts. So, you can even install 80% of the wide game, what you're gonna play is be looking at menus until you make your car, and then you're gonna drive it and not be satisfied with it and you wasted like 80 hours just fine-tuning your car cars has also evolved i'm just kidding but wow this is stickers to areas that did not allow sticker placement in the past 
the limit to the number of stickers that can be applied to the cars has also been increased. This is probably like the best uh, tool. I mean, the video game itself is probably the best tool for any kind GT of Auto racing company to car wash and oil changes as well. make their prototype uh, or the way they want to make the cars look for their competitions and stuff like that. For design, yeah, designing. Scapes offers a new world of photography. What the? That's insane. And then you got showcases. Grand Turismo 7 is also a creative tool our players can use to produce various content. Obviously. Replays, photographs taken in game, livery designs, and more. It's insane. The showcase is a place where this content can be shared for other players to download. You can just hit sit sit in this menu and create wallpapers. Finally, for Instagram bangers. For a look at some new Gran Turismo 7 yes, gameplay. Our closing segment shows two new features added to Gran Turismo 7. What are those cars? The music rally, where you enjoy music while you drive, and the music replay, that syncs replays to music. These are all real-time images captured on the play- No. 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 Why would you do that at the end? Why? <gasps> so that was a uh, Gran Turismo. Uh. Okay, last little tidbit for you guys today is the last thing we're gonna watch since dying light 2 is out this is the dying light 2 stay humans ultimate beginner's guide so i'm actually curious you like to call them zombies walkers undead or infected i think we can all agree they're a menace so grab your controller or we're covering your some things up there we go heads. in this video we're talking all about dying light 2 where to go, what to do, and how to make the most of your playtime so that you're ready when this type of... Let's see, I haven't played Dying Light 1. I have no Dying idea. Light I was never videos, sold sure on the idea, but oh. everyone I know says two, it's such a good game. Caldwell, a member of the Pilgrims who is headed to the fictional city of Villador on a quest to find his sister Mia. In order to do that, Aiden is going to need to run and fight his way through Villador, and that's where Dying Light 2's skill tree comes in handy. This list of abilities is broken into two sides, one for combat oh. and one for parkour. Both sides have 24 skills each that Aiden can acquire to make himself more worthy of taking on the city's ever-present and ever-growing challenges. The only way to unlock these skills is to earn points, points that are also separated by the categories of parkour and combat. This means that you won't be just earning a general skill point and placing it on whichever side you'd like. Luckily, nice. these points are pretty straightforward to earn because you get them by simply doing the activity. Running and jumping around will earn you experience in the parkour branch and progress you towards that skill point. Similarly, fighting enemies will progress you towards a combat skill point. This XP okay. gain is normal during the daytime, but successfully making it through the nighttime when things are more dangerous gives you a bonus in XP gain. So what skills should you invest in first? Well, the answer to that depends a little bit on how you plan on playing Dying Light 2. But let's briefly dive into each branch and talk about a few let's of my see. favorites early on. Similar to the first Dying Light, Stay Human puts a big emphasis on traversal, providing you with parkour abilities so that you can make your way through its desolate Ow. urban landscape quickly and effectively. The difference here is that the parkour gameplay has been expanded to be more natural and intuitive to learn. As mentioned earlier, there are 24 parkour skills for Aiden to acquire, the first of which is high jump. From there, I recommend grabbing active landing because not only is taking fall damage very inconvenient for your health, but it's also very unattractive to break the flow of a good run. After that, <laughs> I'd say go for firm grip. 
During my playthrough, I chose far jump and regretted it because I'd often run into situations where I'd go for the big gap, come close, grab the ledge, but fail to hold on due to my lack of stamina. With firm grip, <laughs> you can still recover and get up onto that ledge even if you're completely tired, saving yourself from the grip of death. The other half of this fight or flight tree is, of course, fight. The first of the 24 combat skills is Vault Kick, which I rarely found a good opportunity to use, but it's required so you don't have a choice in getting it or not. From there, I recommend grabbing oh, okay. so... Dodge, which slows time for a bit and staggers your enemy when you dodge at the right time. After that, I'd say go right below it and unlock Perfect Parry, which essentially does the same thing as Perfect Dodge, but this time it's for when you block at the right moment. Both of these skills are great defensive tools to have when fighting both humans and infected, and the brief slow motion can help you get your head on straight if battles get a little too hectic. And while we're on the subject and the, of dodging and blocking, bo both of them had the same animation dodge. when when the they were hit. My playthrough, I was constantly forgetting about this and only blocking and parrying. Sometimes the game will remind you to dodge when facing heavy attack throwing foes, but even for the more simple baddies, don't forget to move out of the way. And once you've got some good defense going, you'll want to grab power attack. In Dying Light 2, humans can learn to avoid your moves if you go for the same attack too often during a fight. Really? Power attack allows you to switch things up while also chopping off a bigger chunk of the enemy's health. An overall good tip for figuring out what to unlock is to look at what comes next further down the tree and shape your decision on how you think you want to play. What I love most about Dying That's Light good. Skill Tree is that it is less expensive than some other games with similar progression. What I mean is skills do not cost more than one point no matter how far down the list you go. The first row costs one point. Oh, so really? Row. So you don't have to save up points in order to grab a move that you've had your eye on. If you've met the requirements for that row, you can grab that skill. These requirements include your health level, which affects the combat branch, and your stamina level, which affects the parkour branch. Both Makes these sense. levels are upgraded using inhibitors. Stay Human describes inhibitors as drugs that are produced by the GRE, the Global Relief Effort, Dying Light's humanitarian organization, and they enhance your body's abilities as well as your immunity to the virus. In order to reap the benefits of these devices, you'll need to find more than one. Three inhibitors equals one upgrade to either your health or your stamina. So where do you find them? Inhibitors can be found in crates, often hidden inside GRE quarantines and GRE anomaly locations, both of which fall into the category of night activities. This okay. is because lots of infected hide inside buildings during daylight hours, effectively making the GRE quarantine buildings a hotbed for activity until nightfall. The monster at the anomaly is pretty much the same deal, inside during the day, but outside and available to fight at night. However, these aren't the only ways to nab inhibitors, as some can be found by just exploring off the beaten path. These crates can be in a room with no doors that need to be picked, and only one sleeping infected to sneak past, requiring much less of a fight to obtain. And don't worry, the game notifies you when you're within 50 meters to a crate, and displays how close you are to getting it in order to steer you in the right direction. Oh, and so that's prioritize cool. prioritize these whenever possible. That way, you can achieve higher health and stamina much faster, and you'll set yourself up to grab whatever skill you want when you have the points. Spend three inhibitors to increase your health. To get your Aiden skill points is to not skip Stay Human's additional content. This includes side quests, day and nighttime activities, and challenges. For example, completing something like a military drop can net you 1,000 experience for parkour, get you an inhibitor, and even a resource needed for upgrading mods, something we'll get into a little later. Mainlining the story quests can be great if you're on a mission to Characters look the game nice. before Elden Ring is released. But if you want to really experience some of Stay Human's awesome abilities, I'd recommend you take the time to gobble up those additional XP opportunities. But you won't get very far in any of the game's quests or activities without weapons and armor. In so, Stay Human, weapons and armor. Swinging different types of one-handed and two-handed melee weapons. These are maces, Table leg. and sticks that cause blunt damage, as well as axes and machetes that deal slashing damage. There is also a ranged category with crossbows, but those seem like they'll be harder to come by. Each weapon you find or buy has its own rarity like common, uncommon, rare, etc. And even though weapons can't be upgraded, they can be modded in three different areas, tip, shaft, or grip. 
The first two usually add elemental damage to your weapon, such as fire or electricity. Grip mods really? can do things like make your weapon heavier so it inflicts more damage. Mods can also prolong the life of some of your favorite weapons when their durability gets low. So maybe hold off on filling your newest weapon with mods. Use it for a bit, wear it down, and then give it a second life by adding some fire to the tip. Hmm. When it comes to gear, Dying Light 2 has four different class types to choose from. Brawler, Ranger, Tank, and Medic. However, because you're not choosing a class at the start, you're not locked into any specific kind of gear. This means ah. you can mix Brawler gloves with a pair of tank shoes and a Ranger mask. This type of variety and setup can work well, and I'd suggest you having different armor sets at the ready for different types of quest objectives. For example, want some extra buffs in the stealth category? Slip on some Ranger gear. Want quicker health regeneration for a fight? Slip into your medic gear. Have fun with it. And similar to weapons, gear can be Interesting. Upgraded. However, unlike weapons, gear has no durability and no mod slots. So what you see is what you get. Wear it. Or so you can change your Speaking class things, depending on what you wear. Sell off all the valuables that you have laying around in your pockets. You won't need them for anything else. There is even an option to quickly sell all of them at once. You can find out what button it is on your controller of choice by looking at the lower right hand corner of the screen while you're selling. For chances to find really good valuables to scavenge, you should be exploring the Dark Hollow night activities. Forsaken stores are another nighttime opportunity, but in these you'll find crafting parts, something that you shouldn't be selling. The first thing I want to say about crafting is to loot everything. If you see a bag, a trash can, or any Obviously. other physical object, you should be digging through it. And stay human, you'll be crafting lockpicks, medicines, various types of boosters, and more. These items are crafted from blueprints that can be... One would think that people that play these kind of games know by now that they take it upon themselves to be... A sort of a loot goblin, right? For Am I right? Using craft master resources. These resources include different types of infected trophies and military tech. One aspect of Dying Light 2 that I found painfully slow is the healing. Nothing's worse hmm. than being right at the end of the healing process, getting that final blow to the head and dying. That being said, medicine was the first blueprint that I upgraded as soon as I had the right amount of resources and I'd suggest you do the same. Now that we've gotten through what I consider to be the big stuff, let's talk about some additional ways to be more productive in Villador. For starters, have a destination in mind at night. As I mentioned, the world of Dying Light 2 is more dangerous under the moonlight, and if and when you alert a howler and a chase breaks out, you're going to want to know where to go. So early on, I'd suggest unlocking as many safe zones as you can and keep the closest ones in mind when you're out and about trying to take advantage of that nighttime bonus XP. On a similar note, be mindful of the suggested character levels for the region that you're exploring. Don't get caught in a level 5 to 6 area when you're just a little level 2 Aiden. You don't have to memorize the map, but just pay attention to where you're running. And finally, don't forget to use your binoculars to uncover locations around the map a little faster. This might seem like common sense, but I also forgot they existed <laughs> shortly after being introduced to the feature. So be better than me and whip out the binoculars every once in a while, especially if you're high up. And there you have it, all the information you'll need as the new kid in Villador. According to Techland, Dying Light 2 has 500 hours worth of content. So let us know in the comments if you'd love to see more videos about the game. And in the meantime, go watch our review of Stay Human to see what Mark Delaney thought of it. Like this video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful, and stick to GameSpot for all things gaming. Thanks GameSpot, that was, uh, that was informative. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoyed that it, it was definitely a longer one and i skimmed through the last ones except the dying, dying light one um let's face it if you guys want to see the full showcases uh, of the playstation with the grand turismo thingy and the other thingy that I, I i skimmed through which i forgot already check them out go go check them out uh, on your own time it's definitely something that you can enjoy and get indulged in if it is something for you other than that i for one 
I'm going to go uh, play some games after this because this section has come to an end. So I hope you guys will be here next time for the upcoming other trailers and other gaming news or whatever it is that we're going to watch. Like I said, I'm going to go uh, play some games. So yeah, if you want to drop by, um, follow me on Twitch. Be there, be square, be hip, be whatever. If not, do whatever you want.